Hey, it's Craig, WJ6F. Well, after countless hours of YouTube videos, a whole bunch of questions, and even a little soul searching, I finally landed on a QRP radio to pick up. The one I got, ICOM's IC705. I'm going to show you a little bit about it, as well as how to program it right after this. Along with it, I also picked up the POV IC705 carrying cage, give it a little extra protection. And so I can see the screen a bit easier, I picked up the Manfrotto mini tripod. Let's check out what's inside the box. Okay, the items you get in the box, you get three manuals. You get Spanish manual, which I don't need. You get one in French, don't need that one either. And the basic manual in English. If you go to the ICOM website, they also have the advanced manual. Highly recommend downloading that one as well. You get the power cord. Now when using the power cord to an external power supply, you can get up to 10 watts out of the radio. If you're just using the internal battery that comes with the radio, then you can only go up to five watts. And this is the model Bravo Papa 272. You get limited warranty card as usual. You get a little bag of tchotchkes, which includes a little connector for like keys or headphones. Strain relief bracket for the microphone. This little black square here is actually rubber feet for the bottom of the radio and a couple extra fuses. And then of course the microphone. Okay, first things first. Okay, quick walk around the radio with the uh, connections. When looking at the radio on the left side, you have the plug for the, an external speaker or the speaker microphone. If you plug the speaker part in, it'll come through the handheld mic. If you don't plug it in, you can use the front firing speaker. Then you have the slot for your USB card. Ground lug and antenna connector on a uh, BNC. Over here you have the USB connector. It's a micro type B, I believe. As well as the 3.5 millimeter, 1 8 inch adapter for a key. And then you have your tuner and AFC slots or plugs as well as external power on the back, your battery. Okay, the top knob on the left, you have the passband tuning control. Then you have your power indicator next to the power button, box control, your call DR function key. Then you have the volume RF control gain and squelch and the menu key, function key, mini scope key, your quick key and the exit. At the top here, you have the multifunction control, the RIT transmit key, then you have the transmit frequency check key, memo pad key, scan key. Down here, you have the auto tuner receive call sign capture key. And several of these buttons are obviously multifunction. Speech and the lock key. Then you have right in here, you have like an ambient light sensor. You can set your screen on auto as it gets brighter, screen gets brighter, gets darker, screen gets darker. And then obviously the transmit receive indicator, charging light indicator, and the main dial and the speaker. Okay, let's turn this thing on for the first time. And then let's go enter the call sign, my call sign. Hit menu and go to set, my station, my call sign. There's six spaces for you to enter different call signs if you have a whole family using this. Whatever one you want to use, press and hold. Then go to edit, then enter the call sign. Once that's done, enter. 
and you're all set. Okay, let's put this cage together. In the box, you get the instructions, and on the back side is the parts list. You get the main carrying handle, the two button and knob protectors, the main cage itself, two Allen keys, and the base plate, which is already pre-tapped so you can hook it to any tripod you want. If you have any basic mechanical ability, this should be no problem. There it is, all put together. Now let's hook it to the radio, which is where these four screws come in. There's already four holes on the bottom that will line up with these four. And since you're going into kind of a plastic base, I wouldn't try and do any medieval tightening on there. And there you have it, it's all done. It's that simple. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to input a local repeater and a simplex frequency. First things first, turn the power on. Once everything boots up, go ahead and press the DR call button. Tap on that real quick, go to your repeater list. Pick which area you live in, open that one up. First one we're gonna input is a simplex frequency. Press and hold anywhere on that page. Go down to add. Pick what kind you're going to be inputting. If it's a digital repeater, digital simplex, FM repeater, or FM simplex in this case, simplex. Enter the name. and enter. You don't have to worry about the sub name. Go down to frequency. It'll be 146.520. And don't forget to add extra zeros. Hit enter once you're done. You can do a position if you want, if this was a regular local repeater, which we'll do in the next one. You can do the UTC offset, but again, this is simplex, so it's not really going to matter much. Hit add right when you're done. And there it is. For some reason, it always shows up as skip. Press and hold to get the menu back up. Go to the second page, skip all off, and there you're all set. To enter a local repeater, again, press and hold, add. Pick the type, in this case, FM repeater. Enter the name. If you press and hold the up arrow, you'll get cap locks. Enter. The repeater's call sign, in this case, N6SLD. Go to the next page. Enter the frequency, which is 145220. Enter. You have your duplex, whether it's a positive or negative. In this case, we're negative. Offset frequency is already entered. Turn on your tone. Pick your PL tone. In this case, it's 103.5. Position. You can do either none, an approximate, or an exact location. I'm going to do approximate. The latitude for this one is 33 degrees, 42.61. And then for longitude, we're at 117 degrees, 32.05. The UTC offset for this is minus seven hours. And then when you're all done, you can double check it to make sure you got everything. 
and then hit add right yes and again you got the skip to get rid of that press and hold second page skip off and there it is now let's see how well this works You know, available for a quick signal report, trying out a new IC705 WJ6F. Well, we definitely made contact with the repeater. I think it was W6JS, uh, W6DF. Uh, sounds really good. Uh, try it again and I'll uh, listen for some background noise if there is any. The call sign again Whiskey Juliet 6 Foxtrot. Just programmed a couple frequencies into this IC705. Okay, Whiskey Juliet uh, 6 Foxtrot. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of hits on there, but nothing objectionable. Uh, sounds really good. Uh, congrats on the new radio, W60F. I greatly appreciate it. You have a good one, WJ6F. Alrighty, that's all there is to programming the repeaters. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on that bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, check out one of these other videos. And thanks again for watching.